This is a third small group discussion with J. Krishnamurti in Ojai, California, 1972. I don't want to be conspicuous. I think we could perhaps approach what we have been discussing last two mornings from a different uh, uh, with a different approach. I think it is more or less abundantly clear that one has to be completely a light to oneself. Do we, how do we see this? Because the world is completely mad, corrupt. Doesn't matter where you go, it is the same problem, whether in India, in Europe, or here. There are thousand contradictory systems, teachers, and so on. And amidst this chaos, one has to be a light to oneself. That is, that is, I think, the essence of all this. Do we see this clearly? That's what I would like to establish first, and before we go further. I don't want to teach you a thing. Because I have nothing to teach you. It's like entering into a vast ocean sea where it is not chartered. There is no compass, no rudder, and you have to find your way in it. I don't know. If you want to be as serious, as deadly earnest as that, I can't personally, I mean, as a human being, I can't approach any, anything except from that point of view in talking with you, in discussing. One can't, to use an unfortunate word, compromise. I don't want to help you. If I do, then I am (laughs) back in the old game. I don't want to teach you. I don't want to correct you. I don't want to tell you this is right, this is wrong, this should be done, this should not be done, how to meditate, what not to meditate, who to follow, who not to follow. But seeing what is happening in the world with friends, with people who you have known for years, and what the world is like outwardly, in which there is no justice, no order, no beauty, except in nature. I'm talking of human beings. It absolutely necessary, it behoves us to be completely a light to oneself and not depend on anybody. I think if that is clear, you have an extraordinary health. Physically. I don't know how, how serious you are about all this. So if, if you are, some of us are serious, then 
The implication of that is total abandonment of all authority, including this yellow and red shirt. (laughs) Authority in the sense, psychological authority, not the authority of the law that says keep to the right or left of the road. Do we start from that? I have found one thing perplexing, and that is the sharp line, which it sounds as if you sometimes make between the outer and the inner, so that outer authority, uh, acceptance of the laws of nature and so on, is one thing, but inner authority, total freedom, is another. Where is the boundary? I don't think there is a boundary. There isn't a demarcation or frontier. One side you are free and the other side you are not free. I don't think there is a line that so clearly divides the two. At least look at it, I am not saying dogmatically. You see, I essentially I don't divide. I mean, essentially there is no division between the outer and the inner. In essence, deep down, and the refinement of that essence is the inner, and the unrefined form is the outer. And one has to find this out for oneself. It isn't say, well, you have line, somebody has made a line there, and there is outer, and that is inner. You must go from one step across from time to time. I don't know if I'm making myself clear. To see this is to have intelligence. If I have no intelligence, I am talking about my health follow. If I have no intelligence, the problem becomes extraordinarily complex. Where am I to which, where am I to act in freedom and where am I to act in not in freedom? Outwardly there is no freedom, except perhaps in this country a little more than in Russia or China or India. Oh, India there is Peri and Europe. In London, in England there is Peri. You could do practically what you like. Thank God, still. Political authority doesn't really matter. It's so no, 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 no. Political authority, religious authority, uh, authority of the law. Laws of nature. No, wait, I'm just, <coughs> I don't know what the laws of nature are. Of the body, for example. I mean, that is not, yes, I mean, that's not a law. It is, you, you eat healthy food or you don't eat healthy food. You want to do certain exercises and so on, keep it healthy, and that's that. If you overdo, if you over sex, over drink, over smoke, over indulge, your body pays for it. Yes, sir. There's a question that arises here, uh, which is that science has uh, indicated that much of my personality is uh, based on chemical reactions within my body and that, that my conditioning is in fact uh, a strong oh, yes, chemical process. Yes, sir. Of course it is. That's obvious, sir. But how do I, I, um, how do I resolve that? How do I get around it if my, if my conditioning my, is... Wait, sir. Look, my look, cell? look. My... The psyche is infected <laughs> is conditioned by the outer environment, obviously. Isn't it? That's clear, isn't it? 
what I eat, what I drink, what I, the way I speak. The whole thing shapes my psyche. And in turn the psyche says, I must be conditioned that way. I must be free, irrespective of what the physical conditioning is. Don't you say that? I may be blind, I may be short-sighted, I may have only one leg, but yet there is this sense of wanting to be complete, whole, free, isn't there? Knowing that the outer fits the inner. So in knowing the outer affects the inner, and the inner can control the outer, obviously, is intelligence. No? But that if my body chemistry makes me a very violent person. Wait, sir. Does it? I'm, I'm very Does it? Does it? It's been shown. Do look at it. You eat meat, you drink, you you are frustrated, you are frightened. Hmm? The fear, the frustration, the lack of pers- total perception makes you violent. Not just because you do certain, you have certain chemical reactions. Surely this is all well established, isn't it? I'm sorry to be a little emphatic, but uh, I'm not. I want to get on with this stuff. Are you, are you violent, sir, because of the environment you live in? Partially. No, I'm talking the essence of violence. Partially, of course. Because if you are brought up in a little village in India, hmm, with only half a meal a day, you have no energy to be violent. You, are, you accept. And you then say, it's my lot, my karma, my my state. Perhaps next life I'll be better off. But you haven't the energy to say, well, I want to go and blast all these people who are driving in cars. Maybe we take an example uh, that is, uh, maybe we accept doing physical yoga because we say, oh, that's clearly not manipulating the mind. Now, where is the boundary? Some people say, well, then you might also try a few breathing exercises. Sir, so I do every morning. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to talk about it. I do every morning an hour and a half of yoga right. and breathing. Right. Hmm? Your intelligence that, has told you that that's all right. No. I do it to keep physically well. And when the body is tired, I don't do it. I do it. It isn't a routine I go through. So I do it. As you might walk ten, five miles every day. Hmm? Some people practice breathing. People I do it too, sir. Mantra yoga. Uh, that man- you don't do. Now wait a minute, wait a minute. I know you're addicted. You go back. <laughs> it's all physical. No, no, no. Now wait a minute. Let's go into it. Good old stuff. I have had this, sir. <laughs> In India, I have gone into this with people who don't play with these things. Mantra yoga to them is is something sacred, you follow? Yeah. And they cannot stand being questioned. <laughs> so I you cannot stand being what? Questioned, questioned, doubted, as I do. Yes. And yet they, they say, Sir, you are a great man, please, what's wrong with this? So let's go into it, sir. Physically, it is necessary to do some kind of exercise, understood, right? To keep the body healthy. No? Oh, no. And if you do it yoga, do it, or exercise, or walk. You know, some kind hmm? breathing, right. Then you say mantra yoga. You know what mantra yoga is? Of course, you do all of you. Which is repetition of certain. It's really, you go to your teacher, the guru, of that class of gurus, who teach you, who give you a mantra, that is, a Sanskrit phrase, 
which has special meaning, which relates to the disciple, and the disciple is supposed to have lived, worked with the teacher for a considerable time, then the teacher gives you the mantra. You understand? You go to $35 and get a mantra and then meditate. You understand? Originally, sir, the whole idea was that you go to the Guru, live with him, he knows you, you understand? And he gives you mantra according to what you, your mind is capable of. Right? Then you repeat verbally, loudly, and later on, silently, and that technique, verbal repetition, silent repetition, gives you a certain state from which you jump off, spring off, or go off. Then in that state, your body is supposed to get well, your heart, if you have trouble, it should get well, if your eyesight is not too good, it gets better. You know, all these things take place. And you say, my God, how marvellous! Right? Is it physically? It may affect you. If you, if you live very cleanly, sir, without any conflict at all, your body is like a steel spring. <laughs> Healthy. Now, why do you have to go through mantra yoga? To get a healthy body? Mm, come on, sir. Mm? You see what they do in the modern world? You have you do mantra yoga and live a rotten life. Quarrel. You know, all the rest of it carry on and want a healthy body. Why should you have a healthy body? Right? You are mischievous as you are, you will be more mischievous, you are more healthy. <laughs> you know, this is so obvious. I think. Very good, very good. And in fact, I, I wanted you to say this. But it seems to me that we still have this problem that what we are saying is that getting well to a degree and growing up are two different things. And right. But getting well is a problem that many people have. They go to doctors, they go to Western doctors. So wait a minute, so oh, the latest thing is acupuncture and yes, so on. And so on and so on. So I this know. is an In India, so it has thing. all these been things have been played and tr yes. so no, right. Now, so what is it we are discussing? We are saying a mind that is completely without any kind of conflict is a much health, has a much healthier body, full stop, and a far more a mind that's far more alert, active, hmm? totally intelligent. That's all I'm saying, we are saying. And to do that, we say mantra yoga is necessary. No, sir, you don't, but they do. They don't anymore. <laughs> and, and, and now they play tricks, then somebody else will come along and invent something else, and we all fall for it. No, the problem is discrimination. No! <laughs> problem is, is to yoga. see, look, sir, is to see I need a good, healthy body that one, to see that I am highly, the body is highly sensitive, right? It cannot be sensitive if I am indulging, overwalking, over indulging. And a mind and a heart that is really Re the heart that really loves people, you understand, sir? Mm. Mm. And a mind that's really al alert, watchful, active, in silence, not in mantra yoga repetition like a wheel. The Tibetans do that. They have got a wheel, prayer wheel which they rattle, rattle, rattle all day long. No, this is. 
Sean? I experience a problem <coughs> in this discussion in terms of seeking physical health as a goal rather than letting it evolve from within me. Yes, sir. And, and one of the difficulties I have, both in having read what you've written, is that there doesn't seem to be a distinction between uh, mind, intelligence, and feeling. I think so, it's all one. Because when, when I'm listening here, I'm listening in terms of, I feel my feelings. And this is how I experience you and experience this atmosphere. And then when you get into mind and intelligence, I suppose... No, that. intelligence is harmony. Not intelligence of the mind, which is cunning. Intelligence is something entirely different from cleverness, from uh, having an extraordinary amount of knowledge and experience. Intelligence is essentially, it has a quality of extraordinary sensitivity. What if I'm already unable to be clear here because I'm feeling, say, tightness here? So it isn't, intelligence isn't here and stagnation here. Intelligence is total. It's, in, it's integrated, integral. It's yeah. to whole. That's why we say so. There must be obviously a harmony between the body. <coughs> the heart and the mind, harmony. But why make it a goal? Hey! I never said so. That's how it feels, right? I don't. I say, look. <laughs> Sir, I don't make it a goal. <coughs> we started by saying, I see what the world is like. Hmm? I see as you must also see, that in this chaos there must be few individuals, human beings, who are alike to themselves. Hmm? They cannot be alike to themselves if they are disharmonious, disharmonious in themselves, fragmented in themselves, mind, the heart and the body. Uh, say one thing, do something else and act something. You follow? A total, harmonious, deeply honest you. <coughs> That's all. That's not a goal. That such human beings perhaps can create a new world, a new group, a new civilization. This civilization can't create a new civilization. New culture. Perhaps the few who understand this, feel this, know, know this for themselves, can create something new. That's all. Isn't honesty uh, simpler for most people to understand than this direct uh, love that you speak of, which comes only when the mind is clear? So, mustn't I? I mean, That's honesty is. People know that there's dishonesty in, in themselves. When I lie, tell a lie, I know I'm dishonest. Yes. And to see that I am dishonest is to see that the truth of dishonesty. Mm. There's a high degree of self-deception. So you don't even know that you're dishonest. So you are. I think it's far simpler than all this. Yeah. You are complicating <clears throat> I'd like to uh, ask a question. Sometimes out of great disharmony and out of great conflict between desires, there sometimes come very creative and beautiful oh, yes, things. Oh yes, I know this. Like um, I'm thinking of music and Ten painting and poetry. How is that possible? Tennessee Williams. For example. Great conflict between, you know, great conflict, tension, and out of that tension you write, if you have got the gift to write, and you produce something. That's not creative. We must give different meaning to all these words. Creative means a man who is uh, total, whole, not contradictory, not in a conflict, not in tension. I used to know some painters, fairly well known in India, 
France at one time and in England. Before they could paint, they had to do vicious things. You understand, sir? Drink women and violent quarrels. <laughs> then they felt that next morning something has happened and they went at it. Do you consider that not beautiful? That is what is produced? Why, it's not what I can do. I mean, exactly. So, don't you see? Look, in ancient India, 7th century, there's a statue outside Bombay in an island called Maheshamurti. The the sculptors in those days, the painters, the artists, had their guru. They sat with him. They meditated for days and days and days. Not just, you follow, meditate, worked. And at a certain moment they felt this creative thing. Not they didn't drink, they abstained, they held. You follow, sir? Then at a certain moment they felt tremendous. Then they walked with the permission of the Guru. You understand? The Guru then said, You are in the right mood, go to it. <laughs> you know, wait, sir, let's come back. What I'm... See, our minds are so complex and so brutalized, so confused. We have accepted this, that, you follow? And I, for me all this is so superficial, unessential. I, I want to be very simple, sir. You follow? Because I feel truth is something that is so completely simple. And I a mind that is Intention can't understand this simple thing. To live without tension, to live without struggle, to live without a conflict, inwardly. You understand, sir? Can, can that be done? If you do it, you have a naturally, most extraordinarily healthy body. Now, can this be done? Can one be a light to oneself? Because if you light your light from another, then it is second hand. Hmm? It cannot be lit that way. Suppose you have the light, hmm? and I come to you to get some of that light. <laughs> oh, meaningless thing. But if you have light and I have light, which is, you follow, light, it's not yours and mine then, it's light, then we'll work together, we'll create together. Can't one candle light another? Huh? Can't one candle light another? Oh, no. Ma. Light is light, sir, it's not your candle or my candle. If that is clear, how do we proceed to come to that? How do we walk together to, so that your light and my light is light, not yours, mine and his, Catholic, you follow? How do we proceed from that to that? Shall we discuss this, sir? Can I, living in this world, knowing my mind is, is distorted, corrupt, polluted, hmm, and my heart torn to pieces, hmm, 
by my anxiety, fear, and all the rest of it. Knowing all that, out of this chaos, how can there be a simple, clear, unfading, unwavering light? Can this come about through analysis? No. Huh? Absolutely not. Quite right, sir. Why? Why do you say not? Be clear, sir. I don't say it. it be very clear they cannot. You know what it means? I'm very clear on it. Do you I know what? Myself. Huh? I'm very clear that it cannot be done through analysis. Why? Because I've experienced it. No, just me, sir. What does analysis mean? Breakdown. Yeah. Oh no, no. Go into it a little more, sir. Let's look at it. What analysis means? Aren't we analyzing? Taking apart. Huh? It means to take apart, separate. Aren't we doing that inwardly? I may not have analysis. Out. I may not go to an analyst. I may not. Analyze or accept uh, Freud, Jung, uh, Spinner. You follow all the spinning that's going on. Sorry. Even temporarily. I won't accept it because I see, I see the truth that analysis in outwardly. You follow, going to somebody be analyzed or analysis inwardly, dissecting myself. You follow? Analyzing myself as an outsider, looking in. Mm. And analyzing my, my feeling, is it right, is it wrong? You know, constantly <coughs> analyzing, examining, introspective. You follow? All that is going on, consciously or unconsciously. Right? And that's analysis. I say that's totally wrong because it is in that analysis that is division. Yes, one doesn't understand feelings, one feels. Feeling. And no, well, it may be I feel because of my confusion. But what difference does it make? Uh, then there is no clarity. My feeling may be the result of my condition, of my confusion. And if I accept that feeling, um, it has a reality. It has a reality which has no meaning. Feeling has no meaning. No, feeling has a meaning only when it is free from conditioning. When there is no aggression, no competition. <coughs> it isn't just. Wait a minute, sir. Do I can this light be li come into being? Which not that light is not yours or mine. Through any analytical process, outward analysis of the expert, or so it's much more complicated than you know when you say you must. It is much too complicated. And that's why we must see the simplicity of the truth of it, and it's finished. You'll never again analyze. Inwardly, or you follow? You see it. That's why one has to go a little bit into it. I'm don't look, sir. I, I won't go. I'm not. I mean, I see the absurdity of going to a confession. Hmm? Either the Catholic confessional uh, or the astrological confessional, <laughs> hmm? or the analytical confessional, the psychoanalytical confessional, or the confession I make to myself. Going over what I have done at the end of the day. Say this is right, this is wrong, this should be, this should not be. This I should have said, this I should not have said. If all that's introspective. 
at that level, also a deeper level, at the deeper unconscious level, uh, there is introspective examination is going on. The motives, the right motive, the wrong motive, the, you follow? The racial inherited traditional pressures and resisting them, all that's part of analysis. And I see in analysis that is division. Going to the priest to confess is division. Going to the analyst is a division. And in myself, dividing myself as the examiner and the examined is a division. And I see, just listen, sir, I see where there is division, there must be conflict. So I said, I see the truth of it, finished. I won't analyze it. It's finished. I can't. Are we doing this? Are we getting out together? So, is there a way of Direct perception. You follow, sir? Not through analysis, not through confessions, not through constant examination, exploration. What about synthesis? Is synthesis the opposite of antithesis? What is synthesis? Thesis, antithesis, synthesis. Hmm? That is, the two battling, 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 and out of that comes synthesis. That's compromise. That's compromise, a synthesis. That's what the communists, others say. There must be two opposites, capitalist on one side, socialist on the other side, or liberal, and Tension between the two produces synthesis, which is the communist. And the communists have their own thesis, antithesis, and further synthesis. Now, don't you know isn't, isn't there a difference between synthesis and compromise? I don't want. This is. I'm not talking of synthesis. I am talking. We are talking of seeing directly the truth of. Not through analysis. So look, sir, seeing directly that I'm fragmented. Hmm? Fragmented, you understand? I have one desire opposing another desire. I want to be famous, I want to be at you know, be peaceful, quiet. Lovely country for God's sake. And there is battle going on inside me all the time. Now, and I see why they, how this battle comes into being. Very simple to analyze, see that very clearly. Hmm? And then saying, I, they must all be integrated, which is equally absurd because who is the integrator? Is, you, isn't synthesis a kind of harmony in which there is no more conflict? No, no, no. Harmony is not the result of conflict. You see how we are, how we are, huh? So, you say the conflict between good and bad produces synthesis, which is above the two. Yes. I think it. No. On the contrary, the very battle between the opposite cannot produce harmony. Harmony exists when you see the falseness of the battle. It is there. <coughs> Does harmony come from letting go of belief? Oh, obviously. One of the factors. 
I don't believe anything, I can't have any conflict. No. No, 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 that's the most dangerous thing to say. Because, because, why do we have a belief? Because I'm afraid, basically. Because I lack faith. I, no, no, why, do, why, why should I have faith in what? In God? No, there's faith in me. In you? What are you? Just what I am. What, are, what is that you are? Just feeling. That feeling may be the result of your conditioning, the result of your confusion, the result of your, you know, doesn't think. Right, How can you? It's still a basis for operating. Huh? It's still a basis for my operating. You're the basis of your operation based on a belief, on faith. That's what the Catholics do. They have a faith in Jesus. which holds them together. The myth of Jesus holds them from violence, from destruction. You follow? They have done it. But when, it, when the real crisis comes, they destroy. The Catholic have produced hundred years' war. They have been the most murderous crowd. No, sir, don't. No, do please. Go, go step by step, you will see it for yourself. Analysis implies division. And division essentially is the basis of conflict between Catholic, Protestant, Hindu, Muslim, um, Baptist. You follow? Bat Communist, socialist, liberal, uh, the Democrat, the Republican, battle, battle, battle. And I say that battle outwardly is the result of division, obviously. Inwardly there is this division. Me as an observer <coughs> and a thing different from me, which I must change. And so that produces conflict. So I say, analysis. Which is the very which is division must inevitably produce conflict. It may modify, it may help you neurotics here and there, but it is it is the platform of conflict. Do you, do we see this? You know the truth of it, and therefore never again analyze. Therefore, when you never again analyze, you see it clearly, instantly. Because analysis implies time, hmm? doesn't it? No? I must analyze, I, which means I must peel off. Day after day, day after day, you know, which means time. By the end of eight years, I'm ready to die. Not having analyzed myself to death, there is nothing. You say you see it instantly. Perceive instantly. It. What is it? See the beauty of that flower instantly. Yes, but that's an innate. In but, but, in a conflict that exists in an individual with respect to any abstraction, what is it that you see instantly? So in conflict, as we said just now, see, there is division, isn't there? Between me and you, between me and my wife, between me and uh, that man or that woman, that uh, group or that division. Now, to see clearly that division brings inevitably conflict, hmm? what takes place? Well, if I see conflict, then I'm going to go into further conflict. No, 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 sir. No, I have not made myself clear there. I see, I mean, there is this fact, fact. 
that where there is division there must be conflict in the world outwardly and inwardly hmm? the seeing of that fact hmm, ends conflict is the seeing of now you're saying that fact is that fact now it it that's what we mean so it is the mere scene of the conflict the truth of it not just the scene but if you use the word truth you've already evaluated no it. no we have accepted conflict as a way of life right <coughs> yes i don't know if we've accepted it uh, those who are here obviously aren't accepting i mean accepting the world accepts it the world accepts the world does the world accepts conflict as a way of life and out of that conflict there is aggression fear you know the whole business business and a mind says i want to find a way of living without conflict which means without fear without aggression but a way of living not just vegetable life hmm? and it sees where there is division there must be conflict observer analyzing himself is a division and that di- that an in that an analytical process there is conflict right in the process there. in the process to see that very process breeds conflict hmm? see it as you see that thing ends conflict that is process the analytical process is a danger when you see a cobra a tiger you see a danger therefore you act the tiger is immediate perception and there is action to see an analysis as clearly as you see the tiger is little more difficult because we are conditioned to analysis but do you use the word truth in an absolute term no sir i That's use an evanescent it. thing isn't it huh? it's an evanescent thing i ah, no 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 i won't no i won't put it in any uh, is a fading or fixed or absolute or relative i won't say that i see the the truth that war killing another is to put in word, is evil and put that word evil differently is wrong put it any word, is immoral is um, whatever it is i'm killing my brother i'm killing myself right i i see the truth of that that to kill anybody is totally wrong right i see the truth of it you understand sir that to kill is wrong therefore don't kill i see the truth that confession modern confession or the ancient one has no meaning cause it divides and so on so on i see the see the fact of it as i see the threat shirt i see it as i see that dangerous snake i see it and therefore there is action total action which frees me from the snake from the danger that's all does not seeing need to be developed huh does does not seeing as you use it need to be developed no no take that just take that <laughs> that implies time isn't it all development needs time how about recognition then awareness and then you don't jump towards one <laughs> no sir go slowly sir go slowly at this it's quite important you say all everybody says it takes time you must have years you must have next life 
You must have. Uh, it is a process. It, you know, evolve, develop, grow, right? I'm talking about. Right now, I'm feeling embarrassed, and it, it's very faint at first. And gradually, I say, "Aha! Embarrassed. I see." But it isn't as immediate as seeing the flower. It, it takes time for me to say, "Aha! Embarrassed." I mean, no, does it take time? For because you have taken, you are listening to something, and then you you become aware that you are embarrassed. Yes. Huh? It is there. Before you are aware, it is there. But wait, wait, wait! Why didn't you see it? That's what I wanted. I'll show you. Because you didn't look. Because yes, you didn't, didn't look. Oh, I didn't look. <laughs> Your mind was somewhere else. You said, "No, am I embarrassed? Take it. Look, an instant, you can see it." You said yesterday that seeing the truth. Seeing the truth of something produces a spurt of energy. I said, "Look what has happened. If I see, look, analysis is not hmm, is wrong or false. I'm, it's free. There's free energy. <laughs> no. Free from the the false perception. Huh? Excuse me, sir. I. I understand what you say about conflict and killing and evil or wrong or bad. Or I'm using words this so far. But if if analysis uh, is a tiger, yes. Um, uh, someone who is um, a, a spider who is going to bite my infant child is 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 evil. I will crush it. Uh, if I cannot remove the child first, I will destroy the spider. If the tiger is going to is going to attack yes, my child, I will enough. crush the tiger. Yes. So what are, if what? a person is going to attack my child, I will kill the person. So what are you trying to say? I, then where am I with respect to killing another? Because I'm going to feel good. What will you do? You're asking. Shouldn't you kill? A man who attacks the child, mustn't you prevent it? If I can prevent it, yes. Yes. And if I but if you can't, then you kill him? Yes. Then what? That's my question. What? That is my question. If what? Then what? That's your responsibility. Why are you asking me? Look. I said, light to yourself, right? I have a child. I can protect the child against the tiger, against the snake. But men are so brutal, violent, hmm? human, other human beings. <coughs> I kill my child for their own reasons. Now what shall I do? I'll protect it. I'll prevent it. And. I may be forced to do an act of killing. I don't know. But what shall I do? What does my intelligence say? Not my intelligence or your intelligence. What does intelligence say? Mustn't you protect the child? Mustn't I protect? The child? Yes. yes. So, if that intelligence operates, you will do the right action. But to say, what shall I do if? Are you saying we cannot formulate that intelligence? Sanju <laughs> It's well, much easier to have a formula, you follow? So, well, take refuge behind that formula. I, I understand that. <coughs> so then, if the action is immediate and my response is immediate. And no, no. 
your response must be according to the intelligence that you have, which will dictate the response. I accept that. But when the man has killed my neighbor, that the, and Madam, that's what is happening all over the world. They are killing, they are destroying Vietnam and, and New York and Los Angeles. You follow my neighbor, maybe a thousand miles or a few doors away. Yes. And three other neighbors say, Here is the man who has killed your neighbor. What do we do with him? What does the law say to him? What does the law say to him? Well, <coughs> again, Depending on where you live, the law says what you will do with you. But, Madam, look, what am I to do? <coughs> First of all, let's listen, listen to this. I want to have this intelligence which, is, which sees the intelligence that's, that comes out of direct perception, right? Direct perception, if you have understood that. Out of that, that intelligence would dictate what should be done under given circumstances. Hmm? That's all. That intelligence, the more intelligent, the more directly to act. It may. I don't know. I can't tell you what you should do. How? How can I tell you? It's always you. But I think the question that has been raised can be put in a different way. Uh, many of us, uh, each of us, I, for example, see some things the way you describe it uh, directly, and I have no problem. I have no problem with going to confessionals. I have no problem with going to war, with killing my fellow man. But there will be some area, say, my profession versus humanity or something like that, where I will have a, a problem of conflict. And, and evidently I don't see completely because the conflict is there. And even if I go through this infinite regression of analysis upon analysis upon analysis, it leads only to more, more and more. All right, sir. One half plus one fourth so plus one eighth. Yeah. And I never get to one. Uh, so the question is, what, how is it we become seers? Seers. That's my total point, sir. Just a minute. How do you see direct? How do you In see every everything all the time? Which is new, new, but, continue, wait, new. Sir, That's what it means, yes. to see directly, not with the previous directness. Right. <laughs> you follow? Not with the memory of a previous perception which, through which you look. Yes. So to see things directly. Now what does that mean? And each time a new situation comes up, there's a tendency to... No, sir, just let's look at it first. What does it mean to see the rain? <coughs> to look without any ideological or verbal or justifiable image, conclusion. Right? To see directly means that. From our discussion yesterday, we would say to abandon all. No, 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 no. So Let's come back to. Let's stick to one of the simple things. Can I look without any image? Can you look at me without any image? When you look at somebody, your wife, and so on, so on, without a single image, find out, sir. And also you have to find out why that image comes into me. So, you follow? Look at it. Why do I have an image about somebody? You have an image of yourself. I have an image of myself, so how can I not have one of you? Of course. Why do you have why do I have an image about myself? Why should you? It's an ego thing. Who has Probably. put it there? Myself. Therefore, what will you do? Well, that's the thing. 
I'll sir, no, I'm going to say, yeah, we'll go into it. Don't yeah. it becomes terribly simple and clear if you want. Say, I have an image about myself. We pretend, you follow, sir? Say, yes, I have an image about you, about my wife, and about myself. Because I have an image about myself, I have other images added to that image. Hmm? Now, why do you have an image? Because what happens if you have no image? Image is division, right? The Catholic has an image about himself the soul, the body, and Jesus. Right? The myth. And he lives in that myth, in that image. So can I? And it has been contributed through culture, through his living in a particular country, you follow? Education, all that is, and his own. He wants to be somebody. He wants to be famous, he wants to be a writer, he, he thinks he's much nobler, greater, more, you know. So first to see the image, and to see that one is, that that image and the creation of the, the image divides people. Right? And to see that is the end of it. If you see the image making and the image are the most destructive element in life, as dangerous as that snake, then it, what will you do? You don't argue. You don't argue with a poison snake, you move, you do something. But we don't see the danger of the image. Then fear comes back. Face that fear. If I have no image, what happens? I'm afraid. Because what am I then? Therefore I am afraid. So I said, all right, I will find out first that I have an image, what happens if I have no image, fear, then fear comes because thought says, what will you do without me, who is the maker of images? So thought says, Thought produces fear. So you see all that, sir, huh? directly, and then finish. Otherwise, you are, a, you are never a light to yourself. You live in the image of others or the image of your own light, which is dark. Instantly? Don't you do that when you see a dangerous snake? Instant action. That depends on conditioning too. What, sir? The dangerous snake depends on conditioning too. Wait, wait, follow it. Of course it does. As the image does. No, wait, sir, look at, take slowly what takes place. <coughs> the image, about, no, the conditioning about a snake. Because your fathers, your grandfathers, tradition, you follow? The, me- the constant um, the repetition, dangerous uh, snakes are dangerous. Hmm? It's been put in your mind. Hmm? And that conditioning acts. Conditioning 
leads me to act immediately. That conditioning acts. Not you act it. That condition says, danger, move. Now wait a minute. Your condition says, image is necessary. Hmm? <laughs> Follow it up, sir. And, your con- and you see what happens when you have an image. All right. My condition says image is necessary. Of course. All right. Then what if I want to let go of image? Wait, wait sir. First see. First see. Your condition says danger. Snake is a danger. Your condition says image is necessary. Yes. Hmm? You don't see the danger that an image, uh, that all images are dangerous. That's not, that's not my condition. My conditioning is image is necessary. That's what I'm saying. There your condition says is dangerous right. with a snake. Here your condition says image of your safety. All right, but what you seem to be asking me. No, but wait, okay. do listen to this. That one conditioning says dangerous. This conditioning says, not dangerous, right? So you go on with the image. But somebody comes along and says, look what you are doing. That is the most dangerous thing you are doing, because it divides people. Not only you, in yourself, between you, your wife, your children, your neighbour, that produces war, that produces conflict. And you say, no, I am frightened. To be without an image. You follow, sir? And you don't act, because your condition is much stronger than your direct fear. Hmm? Direct fear is that, and direct fear is this also. But you refuse to accept the direct fear. So you say, Bacho, both are dangerous. But I, I'm having a conflict. My conflict with you is that you don't seem to give anything time. I, I won't, because that is how we have lived. But there is a process that has to go on. It no, sir. Time. No, sir. No, I will. <laughs> <laughs> time means. Look, sir. I'm violent. Give me time to get over it. Hmm? Ah, why not? I'm, please, I'm, give me time to get over my violence, because my violence needs expression, hmm? and I must kill people, I must throw bombs, I must hurt people. Hmm? Give me time, I'll gradually get over it. In the meantime, I'm being violent. Well, that, that's a puritanical. No, no, it's not puritanical. That's what we are doing. No, I mean, my, if I feel violent, doesn't mean I have to kill somebody. I'm no, right. sir, I'm not saying that. I said I took. I am violent, and I, I must get over it, right? Okay. Get over it means time. In the meantime, I'm destroyed. In the meantime, between now and when I shall be free from violence. And I say, that's well, what an absurdity. Well, in the other, I'm being destroyed in the meantime. Let's say that I, I have images, and I feel images are necessary, so in the meantime I'm being destroyed. Therefore, being destroyed is the most dangerous thing. But not until it becomes dangerous to me. It is dangerous to you. But I've got to be, perceive it as dangerous. Therefore I say, perceive it. <laughs> but that takes time. No. <laughs> okay, looking takes time before no. I see. <laughs> you didn't take time there. Your conditioning said danger. Act. But could I stand there? Huh? If my conditioning says act, could I stand there? Because that's what you're asking me to do. Yes, sir. Fe- look at your the danger of an image. So you're asking me to act? Contrary to my conditioning. Obviously. <laughs> there is no that is a thing. Could I stand and let the snake bite me though? No, I'm oh, my God. darling, so I didn't say that. So look what happens when you your conditioning has said that snake is the rattler danger. 
and you act. Your conditioning says, protect yourself through images, and you act, protecting it. You protect your image, and I protect my image. You have an image about your wife, your children, and they have an image about you. They are separate, so there is a battle between you. So your conditioning is producing conflict. And you say, that's all right. That's the way to live. If I have no conflict, if image, I don't know what will happen, therefore I'm frightened. No, I have no conflict except you know, concept of evolution. I so of time to go through this process. I, <laughs> time is necessary for that tree to grow into a big tree. Hmm? Is it necessary for psychologically time to be free from the image? I say not, because it's so obvious. Because you refuse to see it. You refuse to see the danger. You follow so actual danger of being a Catholic. Doesn't my conditioning prevent me from looking? That's right. So go to your conditioning. But not instantaneously. You can do it. I can't do it. How else, <laughs> how else could you look at it? If you either look or you don't. You don't. But it isn't partial. involves undoing, letting go of relinquishment. But let go. Why is time? One enough? can't do that instantly. Why not? Yes. Only yeah, can do it. When it is painful, <laughs> toothache. When you have pain, toothache. You go instant. But if I'm going to jump from a five-story building, eventually I have to learn to jump from a one-story building. First. You're not jumping from a five-story building. But fear feels like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> is, it, is it possible that what you're talking about is the time? it takes to do the act of seeing, which is no time at all. And what you're talking about is the time that lapses from your birth to the time that you do the act of seeing. So you say it takes time because you're referring to the, the apparent lapse between your birth and the act of seeing. Yes. But right. uh, what he's talking about is the act of seeing itself, which takes That's no right. time. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's That's clear. Clear. That's clear. <laughs> it seems as if perhaps there's a postponement of seeing. <coughs> and that's what takes time, the postponement. But I'm experiencing all of you as generals, and I'm out in the field. And I say, it's great for you, general, to sit back and talk about it being instantaneously, but it does take some time to, to uh, accomplish this. So, so be simple. Maybe that's not being in <laughs> the field. Be simple. Look, I want to see, so I, I made an appointment this afternoon to see somebody. I made the appointment, right? It obviously several hours has to pass before I see it, right? Is that what you are saying, the several hours? Or the decision the, the, that you have to see that person? Okay, that, that's an act of seeing. You know, that's the first immediate. is the act of seeing. Look, sir, I, born in India, conditioned. I live in that country. That country says you must be at war with a Muslim, hmm? because they are etc., etc. Now I see, see the truth that division is a battle, right? Division is a battle, the truth. Then what takes place? I say, no, I mustn't be a Hindu. I forget being a Hindu. I will strip myself of being a Hindu. You know, they have got all kinds of rituals. I, it'll take me a couple of days. You follow? No, that's what I'm talking about, a couple of days. It, it, that, but seeing division 
is conflict, and the action of it may take a couple of days. Okay, I'm okay. Ah! The seeing is the immediate act which has further action. Yes, you have to write a letter of resignation. It takes time. What? You have to write a letter of resignation from being a Hindu. That yes, that takes time. Yes, but the seeing but the decision, the seeing, the truth, yes. the division is conflict. <coughs> that is important, not the other. You see it, and you see that it's a dangerous thing, and it can harm you. And from that scene, you act. But very often, when a human being is placed in an extremely um, dangerous situation, he can't move. He freezes. And, and and even though he sees that say the car bearing down is going to kill him if he doesn't move, he just physically cannot move, and he is killed. Now I find very often um, I will see the danger of an image in my mind, but I freeze. I can't. Because you probably don't want to act. I, I, I don't know if that's the reason or, or So this is so simple, I don't know why you complicate this. <laughs> it seems simple, yes, it does seem simple. <laughs> but the actual action sometimes doesn't come. There's, there's three years there. So one afternoon in India, northern India, I was by staying with somebody, I was by myself in that house. And a man came to me and he said, there's a tiger which has killed a cow, would you like to see it? And I said, I'd like to see the tiger. And he said, that can be arranged very easily by tying a goat and you remain on the top of a tree. We'll build a platform and you can stay there and you can see the tiger. I said, no, thank you, I don't want to. In that. So he left. And that afternoon late I said, I would like to meet it. So I went out into the woods. Don't get nervous, please. There's nothing. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> I went out to see the tiger and went deep into the forest. And I and suddenly there was absolute silence, you know. All the birds stopped singing. Everything was absolutely still. And I said, but Joe, there is something dangerous here. And I wanted to go forward to see what it was. The body refused. The body instinctively went against a tree <laughs> with its back and it stood there. Because there must have been danger, because everything, you know, have you ever been? You must have been. Complete still. I waited and nothing happened. I moved away. And I went further and there was an opening and I stopped because there was a tremendous stillness. And there were about fifty or hundred big monkeys looking at me. <laughs> so uh, that is, you know, sir, you act when necessary. Uh, this is also simple. So let's get on with this. What about the tiger? What's this? <laughs> you see, the tiger must have been there. I didn't see the tiger. The tiger must have been there, nearby. I've seen tiger on another occasion, but I won't go into story, storytelling. But the tiger must have been there. The body instinctively must have known. You follow? The mind refused to accept it till it saw it. You follow? And the body knew it, and the body said, I must protect myself. Therefore, it went against the tree and held. You know, this play. Let's get on with it, sir. So, now can this direct perception take place? Not just on occasions, or directly. 
see myself angry, instantly finished, never again anger. Being envious, see that clearly, you know, not analyse and go through all the justifications, finished. Because envy is danger. Hmm? Envy employs, implies comparison, conflict. I'm, you follow aggression, all the ugliness that comes out sort of envy. To see that, to see a habit, sir, I don't know if you have done this, to see a habit, physical habit. Hmm? Let's take, for instance, what takes place. I see a habit, scratching my head or scratching my nose or whatever on the head. Now, to see it, not justify it, not control it, not just to see that I am doing this, then what goes on? I have seen it, but the body has set up a habit, hasn't it? Hmm? I go and scratch. Not resist it, not say, I mustn't scratch, but to watch it. Do you understand? To watch it, that I am going to scratch, that I am frowning, the habit. So the perception and the awareness of the habit. Perception is not awareness. I don't have to be aware to perceive. Am I contradicting myself? I'll explain. When I am watched the dangerous snake, I come upon it, and it rattles. Hmm? It's a rattler. There is challenge and response, immediate. The challenge makes me aware, right? Right? You are waiting for dead silence, I am not the monkey. The challenge has forced me to be aware. And the challenge, which is envy, forces me to act. act enviously or act non-enviously. So challenge makes me respond according to the challenge. No? According to the challenge I respond adequately or inadequately. The adequacy and the inadequacy of that response is dependent on the challenge. If there is no challenge at all, hmm, is there any awareness of response to anything? Making it little complicated. Just look at it. There's no response if there's no challenge. There, therefore, the challenge creates the, the response creates the challenge. Challenge. The response creates 
at the challenge, and the challenge creates the response. Yes, they're the same thing. Same thing. Now, if there is no challenge, hmm? there's no response. No response. Wait a minute, sir. No response. What takes place? Do I go to sleep? There's no event anyway. Do I go to sleep? If there is no challenge of any kind, do I become dull? Do I become stupid? Do I become. Huh? No. So, what is that state of mind that is not dependent on challenge? It's freedom. Uh, I, I, don't put it into words, I don't know. We need challenges, otherwise we go to sleep. I'm challenging you all the time, now here. I'm forcing you, sorry, forgive me the word, I'm putting you in a corner and making you look. That's a challenge. And you respond, say, no, I'm conditioned, I'm to take time, you must. You follow? That's it. Now, if there was no response, you'd remain in your condition, wouldn't you? Obviously. So you depend on a challenge to break down your conditioning and respond. Or respond according to your conditioning. I said to you, please, that is not a light to yourself. To be a light to yourself, you don't need a challenge at all. <laughs> you spoke a few minutes ago about the difference between perception and awareness. That's right. Now you're I'm coming that back. Perception Awareness was not necessary in order to proceed. No, because first you have to understand this challenge response. That now, would seem so. Then your mind is a light to itself and it sees. But if I have to be aware of my conditioning, the challenge, the response of my conditioning to the challenge, I have to be aware of all that. Otherwise, I just respond without. Uh, aware and being aware of my conditioning. The moment I am aware of my conditioning, see the truth of it, that seeing is freedom, to look. I don't know. But you were saying that perception and awareness are different? Slightly. I think it is. I'm just I'm inquiring because I think if there you're is. You're unaware. You don't perceive anything. Yes. You're just mechanical. Sir, so, you see. You still respond. Of course. Mechanically, but you don't perceive. Perception implies, doesn't it, freedom? Perception yes. is freedom. Freedom from my justification or which one perceives. Free be freedom doesn't demand challenge. I mean it it, it is free, therefore it is it has no challenge or response. It's free. It's but it will act accord, it will act intelligently in freedom. It's not a reaction. It will act intelligently because it is free. Now, the mind that is free has no need to be deliberately aware. It is free. it is looking. Mm. Yes. Deliberately. It's deliberately aware. It's not aware. Not of course. It's twenty-five past four. I didn't realize it. So, look, let's come back. There's only one thing. I mean, we must come back to this. The essence is to be aware, to be light to oneself. That means no conflict. And 
conflict must exist where there is division. I saw somebody was a minister, prime minister, and we talked about all this little bit vaguely because you know. <laughs> and, the, and the person said, well, "How can you apply this in politics? Because the very nature of the structure of which I have a pre- prime minister prevents. I must maintain division." I can't. You follow? And if you are really interested in it, I said, don't be a Prime Minister. <laughs> That's rather too difficult. <laughs> If he wants to be, but he doesn't want. He likes it. He likes to be the boss of the country. It gives him power, position, corruption, pollution. He's in the middle of it. Mr. Kissinger. Suggestion that governments in the future might be run by computer. Oh yes, that's, a, I, that's a beautiful I, idea. I know. I said, sir, I talked to a minister once. I said, for God's sake, why don't you have computers run the government? He said, what? Get rid of us? <laughs> <laughs> Time's up.